Hello, and welcome back. Today we are talking about this beautiful, lovely blue table behind me. So I first started collecting plants before I moved into this apartment and I had a much smaller setup. Um, they lived in one small window, doesn't matter. We came here and the collection exploded. Unfortunately, the only place in the apartment, the place that gets the best light is this window behind me. But unfortunately, it is also directly in front of our heating source. So a small lesson about New York City apartments and how the heat can work. This certainly isn't for every apartment, but in lots of large buildings, the heat is controlled by the building's super or management and it's on when it's on at whatever temperature that is and it's off when it's off often in pre-war apartments it's a radiator so that isn't the case here this thing that you can see behind me is both a heating and cooling system it has an on off button we can can kind of control the temperature not with a like number you know but kind of like with a dial it's it's kind of old school and so right now today is October 13th and it's off but when the heat is on in the building because there's a radiator in the kitchen and the bedroom in this apartment as well those are off we cannot control them when they're on they're on everything is off now but when the heat it comes on in the building whether we turn this on or not the heat will radiate from it if that makes sense i hope that explains that as we got here and the plant collection started to grow the temperature outside became warmer it was spring when we moved into the apartment hello millie she millie says hello it was spring when we moved into the apartment and as the months started to get warmer mostly sean started to complain about not being able to turn to turn the air conditioning on because this is the air conditioning also in this main room because I was concerned that the air would of course damage the plants so to solve this problem hopefully for the heat yet to be decided we decided to put a table over the source of heat and cooling air to protect the plants this project took a while we went through i mean i looked at so many tables online but ultimately sean ended up finding this table on amazon we will of course link the table below it was unfinished wood which made it perfect for personalizing it to the space it took us a while and by us i mean me to figure out exactly what we wanted to do with the table style wise you'll see in a cutaway that the table is just a very clean lined modern looking table and it came like I said as unfinished wood I found this picture from Pinterest and I said oh I really love that right because I had decided I wanted to paint it but do you want to try and a ombre do we want to make it like a rainbow do we want to do stripes like what kind of painting did we want to do I found this picture and I liked it I said that's a cute idea let's go with that that is what we are going to do. So we're going to rewind back to the summer when we took on this project. Let's get started. First, I'll tell you about the supplies you're going to need if you're going to paint a table. So first you're gonna need a paint pan and liner. A liner just makes it easier so that when you are done painting, you can just lift that liner up, toss it in the trash, and your paint pan itself is ready for your next project. You're gonna need foam rollers, and depending on the size of your project, you might need some refills. You're gonna need a set of foam brushes, a plastic drop cloth to protect the area where you're working, a paint stirrer to make sure that your paint is nice and mixed up, obviously some paint. For this project we use a polycrylic topper to go over the paint to protect the paint job because this table would be living where it would get dirty and it would get wet so to protect the paint we went ahead and put a polycrylic top coat on top but I'll tell you more about that when we get to that step. You'll also need some sandpaper, a tape measure, 
and painter's tape for taping off your legs. When we got started, we first put down the drop cloth because we, of course, this is a rental and we want to protect the floors, whether it was a rental or not, you wanna protect your floors. Uh, so we put down this plastic drop cloth to prepare ourselves to paint. This paint is actually uh, Sherman Williams paint. And I believe the paint color is called Anchors Away. It is the same paint that we use to paint an accent wall in our bedroom. So we bought a full gallon of paint, used about half of it, you can see here. I figured we've already got it, let's just use it. First, we're gonna take the lid off our paint and give it a good stir because it has been sitting and we wanna make sure that the components of the paint nice and mixed up so we're going to give it a good stir another reason why we decided to use the polycrylic topper is that this paint isn't furniture paint it's wall paint and girl i had no idea well, I did once I Googled that wall paint and furniture paint are different. Furniture paint would be a little bit uh, more durable for furniture, obviously, right? Because you're going to use the furniture and the wall is the wall. So we're using our leftover paint, which also is cost effective because what else are we doing with this paint? And one thing you need to know when you are using a darker paint, dark blues, dark greens, black, any dark moody paint, you're definitely going to need to do at least two coats. I think on the wall we did two coats and felt good with that, but you'll see with this table, I think we end up doing maybe about two and a half coats. But dark paint, in order to really get that color the way it should be, deep, dark, and saturated, it will need multiple coats. And then, honey, you take your foam roller, you pour some paint, into your paint pan, you get some paint on your roller, and you roll away. A few tips when it comes to painting both a wall and furniture. Just so you guys know, I am a novice. I love to watch DIY videos on YouTube, and in my spirit, I am a DIYer. But in actuality, I am a complete novice. But I will say, when you are painting via wall or furniture, the key is not pressure but making sure that there is enough paint on your roller. You shouldn't have to press too hard because then when you end up pressing hard, you can get uh, lines. You'll get the, the pressure will cause lines in your paint job and it won't finish nice and smooth. So if you, you should be able to just roll naturally and if it, there's paint no longer depositing on your project, you really just need to put more paint on your brush. So with this table, we rolled the top, we rolled the edges, uh, and when I, I we used the roller on the top and the edges, the parts where the roller couldn't reach, I went back in with my foam brush. Now, for this project, you could also use a regular paint brush if you wanted to. I got the foam brushes because the internet when I was researching uh, top coats, because there are top coat options, when I was researching polycrylic specifically, lots of people were mentioning that they you should use a foam brush to get a streak free finish. In order to keep my supply list down, I just got this thing of foam brushes and figured I would use it for both the paint and the polycrylic top coat. This doesn't cover the best, but the paint dries quickly. It's an unfinished piece of wood, so it soaks into the wood quickly. The paint dried fairly quickly, so I was able to get enough coverage with the foam brush for those small detail areas.
All right, now once we were done painting the table, or at least our first coat on the table, we can move on to the legs. As you can see in the inspiration photo, we only wanted to paint partially down the legs. The table where it's sitting is visible in the apartment. And although it's not the exact same wood color as the floor, I, it's really complimentary. When it comes to woods in homes, trying to match them will never work. But you'll see that the lightness against the almost yellow tone of the floor still works. So we wanted to leave the bottom of the legs unfinished and only paint halfway down the legs. So I used a tape measure so that I could see about how far up the legs I wanted to go. And then I just used some green painter's tape to tape that off. And then I'm just going to paint everything below the tape. Uh, when taping off the legs, I did use a double layer of tape. Not necessary, not necessarily something you have to do, but I just wanted to be doubly sure that our line was very crisp. So after I measured the first leg, I just kind of approximated for the rest of them based on where the tape was on the first. In my spirit, I am a DIYer. In real life, I'm a novice. So it was a bit of a wing tiny bit of a wing, but also the only two of the legs would really be visible and they would be so far apart from each other that if the lines were slightly off, it would be okay. So now we've painted the legs, we've gone back in, we've done a second coat on the table, we've done a second coat on the legs, and it is time for polycrylic. This table was going to get dirty, soil is gonna fall on it, it's going to get wet from me watering the plants, and when researching protective top coats to protect the paint, the two options that really came up for me were a wax coat or a polycrylic coat. And the wax, um, just didn't seem like it would protect the wood enough against the water. It's an inexpensive table and I'm not saying that when we leave this place that we're going to toss it, but so we do want to protect it, but it isn't, I mean, we're DIYing, so you know. To start the polycrylic process, you have to give your table a light sanding. You want your surface to be as smooth as possible. Now we used a 220 grit sandpaper, which in hindsight was probably a little rough sandpaper gets less rough the higher the number so 220 is actually pretty rough we could have gone for something in the 400 range which probably would have been better for this project because it would take off less paint the 220 is so rough that it was taking off paint when I initially went in with it. So there were a few places where I had to touch up the paint because I had basically sanded it off. To combat that, I just went in with a very, very light hand when the, with the sanding and would only run over it a few times. Once you've sanded your, the top of your table, then you really need to clean and make sure all of that dust uh, is off the, up the table. So first we tried to use um, like a Swiffer, um, dry Swiffer to try and get the dust but I ended up just using a microfiber cloth that I keep around for cleaning dust anyway it really collects dust in a way that the Swiffer just wasn't wasn't doing once I had gone over it with the microfiber cloth I went back over it with the wet paper towel and allowed everything to dry so like I said the internet said to use foam brushes with the polycrylic now this is the first and only time that I've used polycrylic so I am not an expert but I am going to tell you what mostly worked for me <laughs> what I learned is that the polycrylic dries 
very quickly. You also need to give it a stir when you open it because the components will separate. So you wanna make sure you give it a good stir, make sure all that chemistry and science is mixed up in there and use a large foam brush. And I started working slowly in small sections, no be as fast as possible and if you can go in one direction that's probably better the stuff gets sticky and then it becomes impossible to wipe back over it once it starts to get tacky so like i said work fast and probably uh all in one direction we decided not to polycrylic to poly coat the legs of the table. We don't have children living in this house. The cat doesn't scratch the table. The legs will probably be fine without a topper on them. We were really just concerned about the top and the sides of the table because that is where the water and soil would really uh, have a chance to affect the paint job. The research says that you can do multiple layers of polycrylic based on how much wear and tear your specific piece of furniture will get. I did a first layer, I did an initial layer, gave it a light sanding again just to make sure that everything was still smooth because I didn't really know how to work with the polycrylic and there were a couple of places where it got a little thick. So you want to sand that smooth once it's dried of course and then go in and again go over with the microfiber to pick up any dust and go over it with a wet paper towel to make sure that you've cleaned it as best as you can and then go in with the second coat and you can see with the second coat that I was working much faster although I was still going in both directions it ended up kind of leveling itself out for the most part uh, and actually turned out pretty well be fast and don't be afraid I will admit that I was a little afraid of the polycrylic coat uh, but it actually turned out okay and how do you know if you can do something if you don't try so it was a fun project So now we're nearing the end. It's time to put the table together. Sean came in with an assist. He pulled out the drill. He was like, girl, that little wrench. Mm -mm, I don't got time for that little wrench. Let me help you. Let me help you screw these in. So we just attached the legs. Very easy. It came with very clear instructions. It came with all of the parts and pieces needed in the box. I had no problems constructing the table. After the table was put together, we came back over to our plant area, right? You can see that we were really in need of something to keep the plants off the radiator. It also lifts them up a little bit so that they're more fully in the window and able to get that good sunlight. Protects the radiator from water and dirt and protects the plants from the heat and cool air from the radiator. This blue color goes great with the color scheme that we have going in this room. It fits perfectly over the radiator. It's lifted off so the heat won't be blowing directly onto the bottom of the table. Like the table isn't sitting directly on top of it. We can easily slide it out to access the control panels for the heat and for the hot and cool air. And it looks fabulous.
So once we gave all the plants a new home, we stood back and admired our work. And I am very proud of what we did. It was kind of our first, well, second DIY, because we painted the wall in the bedroom. Uh, and I think it looks great. Most of the plants have been really happy up here. It has provided a lot more space. And all around an excellent decision. Like I said, it's October. The heat hasn't come on yet. We'll see how it goes. I will be sure to update you guys in another video. So in the comments, let me know, have you tried any painting projects? Did we do something wrong? Did you see us do something wrong? Please let me know because we might try painting something else soon. And I think that I will see you guys in our next video. There's a houseplant tour coming, so keep your eye out for that. Bye.